sensing uh, method the, to locate, uh, localize the uh, capsule. Uh, and the uh, magnet components will increase both the size and weight of the capsule. And uh, the magnetic field generated by the capsule will interfere with the um, outside magnetic field generated uh, by such as MRI systems. Uh, therefore, this uh, method is also not very good. Uh, and the uh, current uh, system used by the given image uh, uh, is a scanning uh, system which is used to uh, scan uh, the grid points uh, on the surface of the body and trying to localize the uh, video capsule with the strongest receive signal strength among the grid points. Uh, and the problem with this techno uh, technology right now is the accuracy is not uh, satisfied by the uh, physician. Uh, since the physician uh, requires a centimeter levels accuracy uh, of the localization. So there are several challenges for the uh, video capsule localization uh, inside the jet track. Uh, first one, uh, first challenge is caused by the uh, complex complexity of the environment. Uh, because the, uh, both the uh, small and large intestines are uh, curled folded uh, tube shaped organs and uh, uh, they are very long uh, so it's uh, di difficult to get accurate uh, localization estimation. Uh, the second challenge is the um, uh, body uh, active and passive motions um, make the, uh, there's variations in the transmitted power so if we want to use the receive signal strength based uh, localization techniques um, this variation will produce errors. Uh, also in the literature, uh, there's lack of the uh, RF propagation uh, channel models for the video capsule localization, especially for the uh, time of arrival based uh, techniques, because uh, if we use technique, uh, time of arrival based techniques, uh, we need to uh, know the propagation speed of the signal, but the signal propagates at different speed than uh, in the air than in the uh, bodies. Uh, therefore, we need to develop channel models uh, for the localization applications. And uh, also, there are a lot of possibilities for uh, different algorithms used for VCE localization. Uh, therefore, in this thesis, we are not studying specific uh, algorithms, but we are um, trying to uh, develop the uh, uh, bounds for the accuracy limits for the localization techniques. Uh, no matter which algorithm it uses. So, next I will talk about the contributions of the thesis. Uh, the contributions of the dissertation mainly include three parts. Uh, first, we uh, developed a, a novel statistic uh, time arrival ranging error bound, a uh, ranging error uh, model caused by the human tissue uh, inhomogeneity, and uh, the second part, uh, we define the scenario for the uh, comparative performance evaluation of uh, BCE localization. Uh, the first scenario was in the major organs inside the uh, GI tract, which includes the, uh, small, uh, the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. And uh, since the physicians are most interested in the um, small intestine, so we uh, specifically uh, studied the performance of the uh, VCE localization inside the uh, small intestine, along the path of the small intestine. Uh, and uh, the third part of the uh, contribution, we uh, calculated the uh, primary lower bound for the uh, both POA and the RSS based localization. Uh, we first uh, uh, calculated the primary lower bound for a single um, capsule localization problem, and then we extended the work to uh, multiple capsule cooperative localization and uh, in the end we analyzed the uh, effect of randomness in the transmitted power on the uh, location accuracy. And uh, these are the publications uh, related to the uh, <coughs> to this dissertation. So I will start with the performance evaluation scenario and the uh, RF behavior modeling. So our first scenario 
uh, it, uh, is the uh, localization inside the um, three um, uh, major organs in the GI tract. Uh, we import the uh, uh, coordinates of the organs from the uh, HFS uh, software and uh, calculate the coronary order bound inside these organs later. The second scenario is the um, uh, movement path of the video capsule along the uh, small intestine. Uh, so uh, we uh, got this path uh, from a CAT, uh, CAT model and uh, using image processing techniques to uh, extract the uh, uh, movement path of the uh, capsule inside both small and large intestine. For the uh, uh, deployment of the uh, receiver <coughs> sensors, we follow the work on, uh, of this publication, and uh, we developed uh, a way uh, put a same number of receiver sensors on the uh, front and back of the uh, jacket wearing by a uh, by a patient. Uh, and uh, then I'll talk about the um, uh, path loss models for the received signal strength uh, based localization uh, for the video capsule endoscopy. So this path loss model uh, from the uh, implant to the body surface uh, was uh, developed by the uh, NIST uh, at the uh, Medical Implant Communication Service Band. So, um, it has two sets of parameters uh, for both uh, deep tissue to the body surface and near tissue to the body surface. Uh, the parameters important uh, for us are the um, path loss gradient, which is the alpha, and the uh, uh, standard deviation of the shadow fading, uh, which we will use in, uh, later in the calculation of the primary lower bound. And for the uh, ranging error model for time arrival based uh, localization, uh, there's no channel model in the literature. So we developed the uh, time arrival ranging error model uh, using statistical modeling method. Uh, so basically this model is to model the um, distance measurement error uh, caused by the uncertainty of the uh, transmission speed of the signal inside the different organs, uh, because uh, the signal transmission speed inside different organs is a function of the permittivity of the organ tissue, and uh, we don't know uh, how long the signal, what's the di distance the signal traveled inside the, each organ uh, through certain paths. Uh, so we are trying to model this uncertainty statistically uh, by using this uh, 3D uh, human torso model we uh, try to uh, simulate uh, uh, several, uh, several hundred of transmitter and receiver locations and try to find the, each path, the, uh, like what's the distance of each path uh, going through each organ and uh, trying to um, model the distance error, distance measurement error caused by the uh, tissue inhomogeneosity uh, statistically. Uh, And uh, for the uh, uh, tissue uh, permittivity values, uh, we used these uh, values for different uh, organs. Um, after the modeling of the uh, data, uh, we find out the uh, distance measurement error uh, of time arrival ranging follows the Gaussian distribution, and uh, it has a a uh, mean value of uh, uh, minus 3.92 millimeter and uh, the standard deviation of uh, around 2.5 centimeters, uh, which will be used later on in the calculation of the cranial lower bound for time arrival uh, based localization. And uh, uh, the next section, I will talk about the uh, uh, calculating of the cranial lower bound uh, for the localization inside the GI tract. 
So the uh, primary lower bound uh, is the uh, uh, variance of an unbiased estimator, uh, which is uh, given by the inverse of the feature information matrix. And uh, uh, the derivation is first given by the Ventris book. So the, the primary lower bound gives the best expected performance we can get uh, in the localization problem means the, uh, the highest accuracy we can uh, get. So we first calculated the uh, primary lower bound uh, for the single video capsule localization problem. So we assume that there is only one capsule uh, traveling inside the GI tract and there are M receiver sensors on the body surface. So we can observe uh, M uh, signals uh, either time arrival or receive signal strength. And the uh, uh, location coordinates we want to estimate is uh, only for the video capsule, which is uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so for the observations, for the, uh, uh, if we observe the receive signal strength, it follows the uh, uh, if, if we observe the time arrival, it follows a random uh, Gaussian random variable, which is from the ranging error model. If we are obser observing the received signal strength, it follows a log normal uh, uh, distribution, which is uh, according to the uh, path loss model. Uh, and then we uh, developed the, the uh, feature information matrix for the uh, primary lower bound. And the uh, variance of the uh, location estimator of the uh, capsule is a trace of the inverse of the feature information matrix. And then we uh, use this calculation. We uh, analyze the, uh, the performance uh, of several scenarios. The first one, we uh, uh, analyzed the effect of the uh, organ shape and the location on the uh, lo localization accuracy. Uh, we compared the, the localization performance uh, inside the uh, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. And the results show that uh, uh, both for TOA and RSS, uh, the location localization accuracy is uh, lower in the large intestine. Uh, due to the uh, uh, geo, due to the location of the large intestine to the receiver sensors, uh, and then we uh, analyzed the, the effect of number of receiver sensor arrays, uh, receivers on the sen receiver sensor arrays uh, to the locate localization accuracy, and uh, for uh, both QA and RSS based localization. Uh, we find out uh, uh, when the receiver sensor number is less than 32, uh, it, it cannot uh, provide uh, satisfied results. Uh, for RSS, uh, if the receiver sensor number is less than 32, it cannot provide errors less than five centimeters. For the time arrival um, based techniques, uh, it cannot provide the accuracy less than 1.5 centimeters. And then we uh, studied the uh, effect of the receiver sensor topology on the um, uh, localization accuracy. Uh, we analyzed the three different kind of topologies. And this result is interesting since uh, uh, for the uh, uh, RSS based techniques, uh, the localization accuracy is uh, higher when the receiver sensors are uh, around the center of the um, uh, receiver array. Uh, meanwhile, for the time arrival based uh, localization techniques, uh, the accuracy is higher when the um, receiver sensors are distributed on the border of the uh, topology. Uh, and then we uh, extended our work for the uh, single capsule localization to uh, multi capsule uh, cooperative localization. So uh, I'll first introduce what is cooperative localization. 
so in the non-cooperative localization, uh, the unknown nodes uh, can only communicate with the uh, reference points. Uh, therefore, uh, we need either uh, like many uh, uh, reference points or uh, the reference points transmit uh, power should be large so that it can cover all the unknown nodes. Uh, however, in the uh, cooperative localization, uh, the unknown nodes can uh, communicate with the reference nodes and also they can communi communicate with each other uh, to uh, uh, trans uh, transmit the uh, information. Uh, therefore, it can pro provide higher accuracy and it requires less reference points. So for uh, this, uh, for the uh, video capsule localization scenario, we assume there are n capsules uh, sending to the uh, uh, patients uh, like sequentially, uh, and uh, still there are m receivers, and we want to uh, estimate the location of the n capsules simultaneously uh, using the cooperative localization. Uh, and uh, as we can see, since there are uh, multiple capsules inside the GI tract, the uh, observation uh, vector is uh, much complex than the uh, single uh, capsule scenario. So uh, uh, after that, we also developed the feature information matrix for the uh, multi-capsule scenario. Uh, and we calculated the uh, elements of the feature information matrix. Uh, and the, uh, we got the parameters for uh, both time arrival and uh, receive signal strength based uh, uh, localization techniques. And then we uh, analyzed the, the effect of a uh, number of uh, capsules in cooperation on the location accuracy. Uh, and it turns out the influence of number of POs has less, e uh, less effect than the number of receiver sensors on the, on the uh, localization performance. Uh, Therefore, we think increasing the receiver's uh, sensors is more effective than uh, increasing the number of POs in, in cooperation uh, for the overall performance. And uh, next, we uh, studied the uh, uh, effect of the randomness in the transmitted power on the uh, localization accuracy. So in this uh, situation, the Fisher information matrix is composed of two parts. Uh, one is the uh, Fisher information matrix mentioned before, and the second one is the uh, is the uncertainty caused by the uh, power randomness of the power. So uh, we got the results. The uh, if the random uh, if the uh, randomness in the transmitted power is 10 dB, uh, it causes like uh, 7.1 percent increase in the error for the uh, large intestine compared to the 1.2 percent for small intestine and 4.7 for the stomach. Uh, therefore, we conclude that uh, the randomness in the transmitted power has uh, more influence on the location accuracy in large intestine compared to the uh, small intestine and stomach. Uh, and finally, uh, we. Uh, analyzed the location accuracy along the uh, small intestine. Uh, we analyzed the accuracy from the start of the small intestine to the end of the small intestine, uh, which is uh, eight meters in total. Uh, and uh, from the results, we found out the uh, fluctuations of the location localization accuracy uh, using received signal strength is much larger. Uh, than using the time arrival based techniques, uh, but they uh, they appear to have the uh, similar uh, behaviors uh, along the path, like in several uh, distances from the start of the starting point. They uh, they appear to be uh, the higher levels uh, and lower lower levels at the same location. So uh, finally, I'll give the uh, conclusion and future work. 
So uh, from this um, uh, dissertation, we found out um, it is possible to achieve five centimeters uh, lo localization accuracy for RSS based location techniques and 1.5 centimeters for time arrival based lo localization technique. And uh, to achieve these levels of accuracy, at least 32 receiver sensors uh, is needed to, uh, on the body surface for the sensor array. Uh, and also, the number of receiver sensor array is more important than the number of uh, POC in cooperation. Uh, we also analyzed the randomness, uh, the effect of randomness in the transmitted power. Um, and finally, since the uh, physicians uh, require accuracies up to 10 centimeters, uh, the results of this study uh, suggests that the uh, art localization technique is practical for the VCE localization. Uh, the future works. Uh, uh, have two directions. Uh, we can uh, either using the uh, movement models, uh, which our lab is working on, uh, or the uh, land landmarks in the along the small intestine, using image processing to increase the uh, localization accuracy, or we can also use the um, uh, Kalman filter or the particle filters to combine the RF localization with the uh, other techniques <coughs> as the inertial sensor measurements to increase the uh, localization accuracy. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the complete publication list uh, of mine during the uh, years I'm in the series. These are the first are the ones related to the dissertation, and then it's the other papers related to uh, indoor geolocation and robotic applications. I think now it's open to general audience to ask questions regarding clarification of the presentation. It was very clear. One question. Uh, about, about the cooperative localization, yep. the 